Start game now. Welcome, retro fans, to a very special episode of the Nosewear Gamer. The Mappy Diorama is here to help us celebrate because we have just hit our 100th episode. Hooray, hurrah! And it brought with it a special game, Sewer Shark, for your Sega CD. Sewer Shark was one of the uh, early titles for the Sega CD back when they still put them in cardboard boxes. There's not many that came in cardboard boxes, but this one did. Later on, it would actually be packaged with the system. The box art has this kind of B-video quality to it that I totally dig. I, I, I am like a B-movie kind of fan, and this one just screams it. Totally 90s here. Very flimsy, but let's go ahead and join our co-pilot ghost, put this into our Sega CD, and take it for a spin to find out just how good or bad Sewer Shark is today. Let's go to the game. Sewer Shark was one of the very first full motion video video games, came to the Sega CD in 1992. It is a first person on rail shooter for one player. It was developed by Digital Pictures and published by Sony ImageSoft. That's right, before Sony would put out the PlayStation, they were cutting their teeth on the Sega CD with games like this. Originally, Sewer Shark was developed for the Hasbro Nemo system, a 1985 system, at least that's when it began to get developed, that was based on VHS tapes rather than cartridges so you could have full motion video with it. This game was developed for it in 1987, however the system was shelved and it never saw the light. So basically when Sewer Shark came to the Sega CD, it was already a 5 year old game. Sewer Shark also had some creative forces behind it. It was directed by John Dykstra. John was known for his visual effects works on such movies as the original Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope to even recent titles such as 2014's relaunch of Godzilla. The gameplay was developed by Rob Fulop, who is best known for his work on the Atari 2600 as such games as Demon Attack and Night Driver. It also had a bunch of uh, basically bit stars in Hollywood, no one too famous except for Robert Costanzo, who is known for being basically a character actor in several different TV shows and movies. He's one of those guys who you may not know his name, but you probably have seen his face in several different projects. He's also the voice of Detective Bullock in the original Batman the Animated Series, something that I am very fond of myself. Sewer Shark takes place in some sort of a post-apocalyptic world where strange creatures infest the sewers. Now it's up to you, a rookie sewer jockey, to mount your vehicle, called a Sewer Shark, and gather a million pounds of vermin to earn a trip to Solar City, a basically a paradise type city. In the game, you shoot the vermin by using the crosshairs and pressing the A button to fire. However, you may not know if you hit it until it comes very close to you. That's when the animation detects whether it's going to die or pass you by. So sometimes you could shoot it, think you got it, but it'll go right by you. And there's other times where you could shoot it early on and then wait and it looks like it's alive and then it comes really close to you and just goes, ah, and falls off the screen. That's just due to the technology itself. Sometimes you're also going to need to turn your vehicle, especially after you get directions. Usually that come from your robot friend, Catfish. What happens is when you see a flashing arrow at the top of your screen and if you want to go that direction, you have to press the B button and then the D-pad in that direction in order to go that way. You'll definitely want to do that because you take the wrong turn and you might find yourself in a true dead end. Later on in the game, you will have hydrogen build up in the sewer that will require you to throw a flare at it by pressing the C button. There is a little hydrogen meter at the bottom of your screen and when it reaches the red is when you need to shoot the flare. You only get one life in this game and there is several ways to die. So you want to be very careful because there is no save or continue feature and the game itself lasts approximately 40 minutes from beginning to end. You can die in various ways by hitting walls when you take wrong turns or don't turn when you're supposed to. You can also run out of energy. There's a little energy meter at the bottom of your screen that's constantly running down as you shoot and travel and when some critters hit you as well. But there are re charge stations and you want to be very careful to enter these when they come up. Your co-pilot ghost will yell out that it's coming up and you will see two lights above you, a red and a green and you want to direct your ship towards the green to recharge. If you don't do it you will probably run out of energy and your game will be over. You can also 
have your game end based on poor decisions on yourself or poor performances based on what your co-pilot ghost thinks. For instance, there's one part in the game where he upgraded the sewer shark and out of the blue he yells fired and he wants you to fire the gun and if you don't fire it, he will get mad at you and the game will be over just like that. Graphically speaking, um, the video is very grainy as are most early titles, but you do get a good sense of what's going on. Uh, I did think that the special effects were very good, even though the graininess kind of hides them. The characters that were drawn into the game may not be that great, but as far as the backgrounds and the original raw footage, I did think that was pretty good. Uh, it is hard sometimes to see the recharge station when you uh, have to see the red or the green light above you, so you do need to keep an eye out for that. Sound and music wise, it does have a CD quality soundtrack, but it's really nothing special, but it's not too bad either. It does a good job of just being good background music. However, I did think the voice work for the most part was really great. Family friendly wise, it is a darker game, so it's probably better suited to older kids, but there is no blood or cursing in it. On eBay, this game is fairly cheap. It was a big seller when the Sega CD came out and eventually became the pack and so there's lots of copies around. Loose copies will cost you about four to five dollars and sometimes you can get the instructions with them. However, if you want the original copy that came in the cardboard case, typically those go for about fifteen dollars and of course that includes shipping as always. Overall, would I recommend it? Well, I have to tell you something. If this was just an on-rail shooter and that was that, I wouldn't probably recommend this game. But the game does a good job keeping you on your toes and keeping the action going. With all the directions that it throws at you, having to remember where to turn, paying attention to that while trying to shoot the bad guys at the same time, there's definitely a lot to do in this game. It's probably one of the best on-rail games that I've ever seen, especially for a full motion video game. And I thought the acting for the game was really great and hammy, just the way it should be. This is kind of the acting that if you enjoy B-movies, you're probably going to like this game. I'm a Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of guy, and this game was right up my alley. I thought the guy who played Ghost did a really great job, and I really liked the evil boss character played by Robert Costanzo. I thought he did great as well. Actually, I think just about all the characters did very good and really gave a lot of personality to the game. It's one of these games where even though it's the same footage over and over again, I just don't get tired of it. And usually when it comes to things like TV shows and movies, I watch them one time and that's about it. But there are a few that I can watch them over and over and still be entertained. And this is one of them game wise. So I had just a lot of fun. Is there some time where it's frustrating and sometimes where it gets cheap and it's, it's difficult and you die when you don't want to and then you have to restart? Sure there is. But I just had so much fun I didn't mind starting over again. So where am I going to rank this game? Well so far I've only had one other Sega CD game and that is the exceptional Thunderstrike. Which is a great Desert Strike meets 3D kind of helicopter shooter. That is a better made game than Sewer Shark in many ways. But to be honest with you, and this is just my opinion, I had more fun with Sewer Shark. I just loved the campiness, I loved the action, I thought it was really great despite some of its imperfections. That's just me. Some people are going to play this game and think it's just the dumbest thing ever, and you're definitely better off in that case getting Thunderstrike. But for me personally, Sewer Shark is my new number one game on the Sega CD. I just wanted to thank everyone for reaching 100 episodes, especially you, the viewer. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be doing this to this day. So you can blame yourself for this Sewer Shark video. Way to go. That's actually a pretty cool thing, and I totally appreciate it. Don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Go to either one, search for The No Swear Gamer. Shouldn't be too hard. And until next time, I hope to see you right here for episode 101 of The No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody. Relax. Pretend it's a game. Maybe it'll even be fun.